Did you hear that? Yeah, that was so cool. Hey, Mom, what the heck? Super Mash. <laughs> Hi, and welcome friends to our humble homestead. If you're new here, I'm Hannah, and I live very tiny with my family of seven, almost eight, in our shed to homestead conversion. And if you are returning, thank you so much for coming back. We really appreciate it. And thank you so much for following along with us on our journey. It's been quite an adventure. He's a little chubby kitty. In this video, we will be sharing with you the beginnings of an addition to our tiny home. This space right here will become four new rooms. <laughs> Ellie, what are you doing? <laughs> Are you going to paint the rock, Ellie? I would say that one of our favorite things about living this way is the sense of freedom that it has given us. We are free from a mortgage and from several bills that come along with that. And we're very grateful that we've been able to financially reset and work towards our goals of eventually being self-sustaining. And it's been really wonderful to watch our family's home unfold slowly but surely. Look at you guys getting the eggs. Thank you. Look at all those. Look at you. Good job. So gentle. Good job, guys. Do you feel powerful? And a part of this freedom has oddly come this sweetness from accepting a season of surrender. A lot of things have not unfolded in the time span we would have liked but they have perfectly with God's timing. We have grown so very much emotionally and spiritually just from living this alternative lifestyle. And I'm sure we have a lot more growing ahead of us. Part of this current season of surrender is that our next child is due in about two months, and though we will do everything we can to add on this addition as fast as possible, we can't promise anything. Nothing is guaranteed with my husband's work schedule, but with the weather as we are now in the winter. So we have to fully trust on our Heavenly Father for when things will come together, and accept that if it's not finished, it just means that we have more lessons ahead of us and that he is good and he will see us through. In the meantime, we will do our best to be good stewards of the time we have and work as diligently as we possibly can with our own hands.
I once read that we should never be afraid to ask for help because you never know what opportunity it might give someone else to be blessed by helping you. And it allows us to carry one another's burdens as the body of Messiah. So we were very, very blessed after we expressed our need with the roof and our fellowship turned out in a big way. Two days in a row, people came to our home and helped us with our roof. And I could honestly cry just thinking about it. So smart. I mean, that's math. It's impressive. So sweet. Oh, I see. So sweet, Joe. So, dear friends, if I may encourage you, if you are in a season of waiting and uncertainty and you feel pressed to have things done by a certain time, I pray that our Heavenly Father surrounds you with peace that surpasses all understanding. And let me just say, we totally understand it. We know exactly what it's like to want to rush things as much as we can because we believe we know exactly what we need. But thankfully, we have a wonderful Heavenly Father that we can cast all of our cares on. And He, more than anyone, knows exactly what we need. And sometimes that's not ideal circumstances. Sometimes it's circumstances that are somewhat hard, but bring about a lot of growth that we didn't even realize we needed. And who knows? Perhaps the season of surrender that you're being called to right now will someday be a powerful testimony to those who watch you as you live through it and those who hear about it later. And while it's small, I truly do hope that our alternative lifestyle is encouraging to those who take the time to watch it is far from perfect, but it is very, very beautiful. And Yah, our Heavenly Father, Elohim, has blessed us in many ways, ways we can hardly even count. And I'm just overwhelmed by His mercy and His grace. And again, I pray that it speaks to anyone who might be watching that life does not have to be picture perfect, aesthetically pleasing, or even relatable to all of those around you. It's okay if the life you've been called to doesn't make sense to others. What matters is that you obey His calling and trust Him every step of the way, even when it seems like it doesn't make any sense. So dear friends, I would like to thank you once again for coming back to our humble homestead. And if you're new here, I hope you stick around and follow along our journey with us. And I pray it is a blessing to you all. May our Heavenly Father bless you and keep you. In the name of Yeshua, I pray. Shalom.